ready, set, go. Hey guys, what's up? We are now live in the 30, or sorry, in the five day EKG group. Welcome, welcome in everybody. If you are joining us live, put hashtag live in the comments. If you are joining us for the replay, put hashtag replay. And just to let you know, we are on one minute early so that you guys have plenty of time to find us in the group. And also if you need a workbook, we can get that to you as well. So welcome, welcome in officially. It is now finally time. Hi guys, everybody's putting hashtag live, yay. Um, okay, awesome, awesome, awesome. So um, also type in the chat, if you guys don't mind where you are in the world. I am in California, I'm in Pacific time, but I know a lot of you are on the East Coast. So um, definitely put that in the chat as well so we can say hello to you. So welcome in. All right, let's get this party started now that it's officially 5.30. And again, if you wanna join on Zoom, we would love to have you on Zoom. Uh, we can see the comments a lot easier that way. So, oh, Eugene, Oregon, Grace, I was just there. I probably met you, <laughs> met you there. Nice to see you again. Anne's in California, Teresa's in Texas. Awesome. And anybody on Facebook, you can put um, in the chat where you're coming from. So welcome into the 30 or the five day EKG challenge. We are so excited because tonight kicks off a five night EKG party. And I don't know about you, but I'm seriously excited about sharing with you some tips and tricks and strategies on how to get good at EKGs. Because at the end of the day, um, okay, so Lynn is in Charlotte. And yes, Grace, we did meet. We met last week and it was really nice to meet you. Um, at the end of the day, we're all nervous about EKGs. And so you're in the right place. Hey, what's up, Joe? Joe's in the house as well. I'm going to be uh, telling you guys about Joe in a minute. We have a special extra bonus session with Joe. So I'm glad you're here. But to, what we're doing here, guys, is we're kicking off a very big party. You can see we're all across the United States. And some of us are even international. And the goal is to get us a quick win tonight. We're gonna to spend about 45 minutes together. We're gonna to do things like a 10 step system approach to reading 12 leads. We're gonna do things like, what does a normal EKG look like? And also, what are those interval things? And what are the normal ranges, right? And, and what should I look for in an EKG that should make me worry? We're also gonna do a little bit of rhythms and we're gonna get kicking off with that in just a few. But because maybe you're new here with us, if this is your first time, I wanted to give you a little layout of how this class works. So in the beginning of the day around eight o'clock Pacific time, we will drop a little mini snack video that's about three minutes that you can watch. And it gives you a little preview of what we're gonna do in the evening. You don't have to watch that if you're busy, but if you're like, oh my gosh, I'm jonesing for this, I wanna see all the things, then you can watch that video and you can make a guess. Okay, so you can make a guess and you can kind of like, you can play that way, right? And it's a little bit more of a challenge if you're doing it that way. All right, so then the other thing is that you can join on, um, you can join on Zoom or Facebook either way. And we don't care how you join, we just love that you're joining us. And it's gonna be the same time every night. And at the end of each session, we're going to be giving away prizes every night including tonight. So it really is important to be live because if you're not live, then you can't win the prizes. And they're very, very good prizes. In fact, I'll just give it away what we're giving away on day four so that you know, if you're gonna prioritize any day, day four Thursday is one of the best days to be here. Not only because we have an amazing bonus session that day, which I'll tell you about in a second, but because we're giving away a scholarship to a EKG class that starts next week. So that is the big money prize. And we definitely want you to be in it to win it. So save Thursday for sure. Now, other housekeeping details before we kick into tonight's class is that everybody's been asking, um, you know, hey, I may have to be working that night. What can I do to, uh, if I miss a video, what, what can I do? Well, the great thing is all the sessions except one bonus session, which is tomorrow night, are all recorded and they're gonna be up in the guide section of our group so you can rewatch them. But we also put them on a replay page. So if that'll be off Facebook, so you can watch either way. A lot of people are like, well, I wanna watch while I'm at work, but I don't wanna be on Facebook because my boss is on Facebook. We can give you a link to watch separately if you wanna do it that way, okay? So how do you join? You can join on Zoom or Facebook. 
again, it's really easy. Um, if you want, we can drop a link in the group. Um, Tori or Ruben, if you could post a link to our little chat bot, it sends you a reminder 15 minutes before we go live. So you can subscribe to that, which is really great. And then you're like, oh yeah, I gotta hop on. We also send you an email about 15 minutes prior and we post the Zoom in the group about 15 minutes prior. So we're trying to get you guys on Zoom because we wanna be able to, to interact with you a little bit more. But anyway, however you want to obtain the content, we don't care, right? We just want you to show up and learn. Now, if you need the workbook that we're going to be going over, and it looks like this, this is the free little guide slash workbook that we, we want you to have and print out. And if you need this, go ahead and just put it in the chat, hashtag workbook, and Tori, our wonderful assistant, will get that to you uh, forthwith. Um, she also put her email in. I'm sure she'll put it in again so that you can email her for this because this has all the goodies inside. For example, we have Ichi KG from every night that we talk where you can look at it up close and write on it. We also have in here three things we're going to do tonight. So if you need a workbook, definitely put hashtag workbook. And last but not least, housekeeping details is that we're giving away some free CE for this class. Okay, so some free CE for this class two and a half hours and you can obtain that at the end of the class we'll give you a link you fill it out and then we send you your cert so you actually get rewarded for being here not only with prizes but with ce so that's a huge bonus so let's get down to the nuts and bolts of what we're going to cover tonight we're going to by the end of our session tonight you're going to have a 10-step system to walk away with so that you can always know where to start on ekg and have an organized system. And I actually put a blank copy in your workbook so you could fill out one through 10 as we go through if you wanted to do it that way. Another way to do it is to take a screenshot of my slide when I have it up so that you don't have to write it down. But some people do better when they're writing, remembering things. So if that's you, you have it in your workbook. We're also gonna talk about the normal EKG. And we're gonna talk about conduction because that's a really important piece. And we're gonna talk about the waves and we're also going to share my secret roadmap to how I got good at EKGs because it took a long time to get here. And when I look back, there was a lot of unnecessary steps and things that kind of got in the way, right? And I see that Irma needs her workbook. I see a couple other folks uh, need a workbook and also a Zoom link. Michelle, are you able to help Joe with a Zoom link? Um, hopefully you can. Um, and then I'm going to show you my secret sauce on how you can also uh, follow my footsteps. Okay, so. I also wanted just to give you a heads up that we have two special bonus classes this round. Now, every day, every time we do this class, we always have bonus guests. And I'm super excited to announce our two this round because they're very special. And they're both registered nurses, which is, I think, the best part because we have a lot of um, different groups in this, this group. We have a lot of um, EKG techs, we have students, we have practicing PAs and NPs, we have RNs, we have EMTs, paramedics, we have every basically uh, position in the medical field represented. And so I'm honored that our RNs are the ones that are doing our bonuses and they are gonna pack a punch, let me tell you. This bonus class, which is tomorrow night, right after our main session, is the only one that's not recorded. So this one is definitely worth coming to. If anybody's been to one of Gary's sessions before for us, put what you thought about this session okay put in the chat put what you thought because i want everybody else to see not just from me how great this is but he does a bunch of arrhythmias for us so if a lot of you when you typed in what do i want to learn in this challenge you said arrhythmias that's why we have two sessions this time on arrhythmias for you so i'm really honored and excited to present that okay but that's the only session that's not recorded so please try to make it live it's definitely worth it. And then we also have our other guest. We have Joe in the house um, and he's going to be doing a deep dive on arrhythmias for us. And he's coming to us from an EP standpoint. So his graphics and his slides are also just amazing. And so if you want to really beef up your arrhythmia knowledge, you are in the right place this week, folks, because this is extra on top, the cherry on top to what our main sessions are. So I'm super pleased and excited um, to have Joe on for the first time in our five day EKG challenge. And we're really, really 
um, please. So yes, Gary's awesome, exactly. And you guys will also see how awesome Joe is. So those are our bonus sessions. Now, I wanted just to also tell you that um, if you are a student or if you are someone who's very, very new to EKGs, I wanted to just say a little shout out to you, okay? Because I know that it takes a lot to come into a group where there's a various mix of people, lots of people who know a lot and some people who know a little, right? But I don't want you to feel intimidated or scared, okay? I want you to know that you belong here and that we are dedicated to helping you feel more confident. So drop a little chat, um, a little comment on what you are so that we can honor you if you feel comfortable, okay? Um, Elizabeth wants to go to bonus class. Yvette, we have a student. Yes, RN students. Okay, PA student, this makes me so excited. We're really glad that you're here, um, especially our students, because we really want to foster um, that good learning that maybe you're not getting in your classes because they have to teach you so many other things. Okay, so did I mention the CE? Yes, I did, hopefully. And also, this is our um, wonderful um, community manager, Michelle Barkley. You will see her throughout the challenge. In fact, she may even be on this Zoom with us. Michelle is going to um, be one of your best friends in this challenge. She's the one that is our cheerleader. She's the one that makes it fun. And she's also the one that um, will do a little bit of session five for us so that um, she's gonna do a little game. Um, I think maybe she'll pop on later, but we'll, we'll get her on so you guys can say hi to her. Okay, so that's what's coming tonight. And Michelle says, we love students. We pamper you and play games. Absolutely, right? Absolutely. Okay, so again, here's our team. Know that you have a lot of support here. You also uh, met Tori. I um, mean, she's also our concierge. So she's the one that can get you your workbook. And if you have questions during the session when I'm live, please ask Tori. She knows all the things, or you can ask Michelle. Sometimes Megan will pop in our cardio NP. And of course we have our Mandalorian, David White, who's um, our EKG master. If you've been in this group for a while, you know he answers all the EKG questions. And finally, last but not least, um, what you'll hopefully see is that this is a very welcoming community, okay? And um, we're definitely here for you to make this as easy as possible. So let me introduce myself if I haven't met you. I am Jen Carlquist and I'm the one that invited you here to join this class. And my background is I work in the emergency room and I've been an ERPA for 14 years. I also work in cardiology and I also in my spare time lecture around the country, but I do all of these things because I want to, I love medicine, but also I wanna share that love and I almost didn't make it to be here with you. I almost didn't make it because I was stuck with two things in paramedic school. One of them was the dopamine drip. I almost couldn't make it past that. Math was not my strong suit, okay? And EKGs, because I didn't have any background, obviously, I was an EMT and then went to a paramedic position. So it was like, drowning in a fire hose okay so i almost didn't make it here but it was that that pivotal moment when i saw people around me in my paramedic class failing out day by day someone new filled every single day and i knew that i was born to do this job and i was going to find a way around it so what i finally did was um, as you can see by this picture here i actually made it i graduated and became a paramedic and it was, this was my first partner, Frank. And I just wanted to show you guys this picture because I look so confident here. I'm not, okay? And just know that I was literally shaking in my boots because I felt so uncomfortable and not confident with EKGs. But what got me through it was not books, okay? Because I'm not a book learner and some of you may not be. It was actually getting a mentor, an, a local nurse at the emergency room. I begged and pleaded, who's a friend of my friend. And I said, I need help. I heard that you're good at EKGs, can I please hire you? And of course you're broke in paramedic school, but I was like, I'll pay you any money I have, just please help me, I need to do this. This is my calling and this is the last barrier. So he kindly took very little money and helped me anyway. And that is why I do this free five day challenge because I want to give back to somebody who may be uh, struggling like I was once and, and hopefully give you guys the hope and the strength to know that you can do it too. And also people all around you, they're supportive and, and wonderful to, to lean on. 
So um, thank you, Tori. I, I love it too. It gives me chills thinking about the why of this all. It's, it's just really a magical thing because it, the background to this is that I built this group about two and a half years ago, I think, maybe a little more than that. I lost track. And through many, many uh, rounds of this, we've gotten to meet so many fantastic people. And a lot of them have joined our team. Michelle is one of them. David is one of them. Um, everybody came through the five day at one point. So you guys all get to experience it. Now, um, Tori's asking if anyone else needs her workbook, please let her know, she'll get it to you. But when you came in, a lot of you, I asked you, what's your, what's your reason to be here? Like, what do you want to get out of this group? A lot of you said confidence. A lot of you said, I want a stepwise approach. So we're hoping to knock those two out by the end of the five day. A lot of you said, oh my gosh, I'm afraid of getting sued. So that's why I'm here. I stay up at night and I'm just terrified. I also hear a lot of, I have imposter syndrome. Um, I actually had the opportunity to meet a bunch of our students, both in the five day and 30 day on private Zooms yesterday. And a lot of them reported to me in a very private session that, hey, I really don't feel comfortable. Every single day, I dread getting an EKG handed to me. And I know that a lot of you feel that way too. So just know that you're not alone and it's not a shame thing, okay? It's just because we're not given the tools that we needed to be successful, okay? So it's not our fault, but we're gonna start to change that as of tonight, okay? So I'm gonna give you guys a chance to look at this EKG. And, um, oh, Megan, Mar Megan is here. She says, new ERNP here, imposter system. Oh my gosh, you have to um, reach out to me privately, Megan Martin, because um, I know exactly how you feel. Okay, and I have some tips for you. So reach out to me in a, in a private message. Okay, so let's talk about the CKG. I'm gonna throw you guys in the deep end for a second, okay? And then I'm gonna pull you back to the shallow end and we're gonna put our flippers back on. But I show you this because I want you guys to realistically take stock in, can you identify, can you identify the bad findings here? Can you identify something on this EKG that would make or break whether or not this patient needs to go to the ER. If you're in clinic with this patient, it's not enough to know stemming or no stemming, right? It's not enough. There are actually several things on here that are very concerning and I'm hoping that you can see them. Okay, yes, we have a little ST elevation in um, B2. Yes, we do, okay, um, we do. And there's even more problems. There's more problems here. And if you don't know this, we're gonna bring the EKG back at the end of the challenge. We're gonna bring it back and we're gonna talk about it. But we have Samantha on who um, is a paramedic and Samantha sees these very bad waves that we have over here. Um, she's saying they're biphasic, okay? And that's a really big problem. So again, throwing you in the deep end, this is something that if you see it, means there's an occluded LAD and they need to go to the emergency room. Not PASCO, not CLEC 200, not get referred to cardiology. They need to go to the ER right now, pain or no pain. So there's a lot of subtleties to this, right? And there's also some Q waves over here, over in the inferior leads. And so there's a lot of things that are abnormal on the CKG that actually the machine does not catch. So the take home, of today's session is yes, I wanna scare you a little bit lovingly because I want you to actually show up all five nights with me because you're gonna get clues about things like this that are dangerous. We're gonna talk about hyper acute things, okay, that are bad. So she says she's here with her new paramedic partner, Joe. Hello, Joe, so welcome in. Okay, so if you looked at this and you couldn't see those findings and you would have sent this patient to maybe be referred to cardiology, they could have died, okay? So there is big money findings that will not be picked up by the machine and it's not always accurate. So that's why we have to be really good at the EKG, okay? So again, you know, the computer analysis, we can't trust it. The study here is, the link is here if you wanna visit the study, but it shows that there's a lot of missed STEMI, okay? In the anterior wall, there's a lot of missed inferior by the machine. And so that accounts for like 10,000 avoidable deaths worldwide. So we have a 0% miss rate. So as you can see, it's really critical to know even the little things, the little subtle details, okay? And it's all about 
recognizing high risk patterns. That's how um, Samantha, she's been through our challenge before. She's in our 30 day EKG challenge, right? She's learned this and she knows to spot the pattern. And that's really what the key, the secret is to learning EKGs. It's all pattern recognition, okay? So the last reason I thought was really funny, almost so many people said, oh my gosh, heart blocks are my thing. Well, guess what? We have a little surprise for you. We have a like three to four minute video that's already recorded in this group that I explain heart blocks in a really easy way. And you can put hashtag heart blocks and we can tag you in that video, but you can watch it. So any of you who said that or anybody who feels very, very like threatened by heart blocks, don't worry, we got your back. We already have a video you can watch at your leisure and it never gets taken down, it always stays up, okay? Now, I also just wanted to really quickly visit that the, the books that we were given in school, I started with the, the orange book. Did you guys get the orange book? Did you guys start with that? Heart blocks, okay, definitely. So um, if you're in the Facebook group, try to put it there, the heart blocks, because that way I can go back a little easier and tag you in the video. Um, but did you guys have this orange book? Did you have this? Because this is the book that I started with and I was like, oh my gosh. Like the first thing I read about was Axis. I was like, mind blown. Okay, mind blown. I don't know if you were like that too, but this is not a good book, in my opinion, for people to start with, okay? Um, there's other books that are more basic that I like a little bit better. And there's a couple other good ones up here that I, I used. There's, there's another one that's kind of in between this one that's good, but in, in a nutshell, gosh, you know what? We don't have time to read all these books. We don't have time to learn all the things that we possibly need to, to learn. So we need to learn in a condensed way, okay? And um, heart blocks, okay, yes, totally had that book, Brittany says. So lots of people on Zoom wanting the heart blocks. Okay, so that's good, because you guys will love that video, it's super easy. But in a nutshell, you guys, books are not enough for a lot of people. Some people need to see and visualize and write things down. If you're one of those people who likes to write things down, Definitely get out your workbook, print it out and have it with you because we're gonna write some things down and make things a little bit easier for you. Okay, Yvette says heart box. Okay, so how do you feel like this? Well, we're gonna take you back to the basics and then we're also gonna give you kind of a 10,000 foot view of what we're actually talking about with EKGs. Cause you know, the moral of the story is that we're looking at the 3D object with a flat piece of paper. How does that work? Rebecca says, I tried so many books and nothing clicked until I found your courses. Rebecca, we love you too. Um, so the roadmap is we learn what normal is, right? This is what we're doing tonight. And then we do four high risk findings the next four nights. And then hopefully after that, we practice. And in this group, we want you to feel confident and comfortable to ask the questions that you think are dumb, because we know that we want you to ask them here in our safe environment, right? Where we can answer you and we're not too busy whereas our providers are often too busy to, to answer those questions. So there are no dumb questions. You won't be judged in this group. And if anybody is acting crazy towards you or in any way is, is making you feel bad, okay? You just let me know and it's handled, okay? So um, here's my little secret sauce recipe. When I looked back after I crossed the bridge to being more comfortable, I looked back and this is the order that I think you people should go in. So learning what an EKG is, right? And what it can tell you, because there's a lot of things. What are the waves and what's normal? What's the heart anatomy and how it corresponds to the EKG? That's pretty important. And then learning rhythms, and then talking about reciprocal contiguous leads, terminology that we use with 12 leads. And then what is this actually looking at in the heart? And how does it all connect? Honestly, learning a normal approach or what normal is, is critical because you can't know what abnormal is until you learn normal. And then having a 10 step systematic approach to use every single time on the EKG is also a great thing to have and keep you safe. And then it's after that, um, you go into pattern recognition, you do the high risk things, right? You focus on STEMI then you focus on things that seem like STEMI, but aren't. And then you can go deep on access if you want to, but then practice is what makes you perfect. Um, are leads always placed in the same place? Good question. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Good question. So we're going to talk about, um, yeah, awesome tool, right, Joe? So Megan wants the heart blocks. When I get off, I'll tag you. So we're going to talk about what the EKG can tell you. We're going to talk about 
the heart anatomy and how it corresponds to the EKG. We're going to visit what normal is tonight. We're also going to talk about what is an EKG with the 10,000 foot view. And we're going to go a little bit on the pattern. So we're going to give you a lot on that list in just five days. Now, also, one little thing before we jump into the actual training is that if you think EKGs are hard, you're not alone. This is literally so many people's response when they get handed an EKG. Maybe your hair looks like that too when you're handed an EKG um, and you're like, oh no, not another one, right? So don't feel bad about it again. Just um, know that you're not alone. What should, we be, what should we do to be safe providers? Not use the machine interpretation because it's wrong anywhere from 42, around 42% of the time it's incorrect. So it can tell you there's a STEMI and there's not. It can miss the STEMI, right? There's other things that are critical, like biphasic key waves that are really important. Okay, we got Jessica wanting heart blocks. We got um, Kimberly, who also wants heart blocks. We got you, girl, we'll get you. Um, but just know that don't use the interpretation. Actually look at the EKG. And this is an example of one EKG that had the same thing happen, right? So here I was, I'll tell you the story on this EKG really quick. Here I was working in the emergency room and this EKG was handed to me. And my first thought was prolong QT. I love prolonged QT. I had swirly eyes, you know, the eyes when you're like, yeah, this looks great, right? And I was like, oh, look at that QT of 713. This is delicious. I was so excited, right? And it looks like Ellie wants heart blocks. So I was super excited. And I, I did a little dance, a little happy dance. But then for a second, I was like, well, let me actually look at this because I've never seen a 713 in my entire life. My longest is like 640. And let me do my, my super secret Spidey trick on the EKG and see if it's right. Let me just double check. So what do you do? You go and you scan the EKG for something you think is a T wave. So this looks like a T wave right here, right? That looks like a T wave. So I make a line through it. And I notice that it is not yet halfway between the R and R. And for this reason, it's not right. I can tell you that the T wave has to be halfway between the R and R if it's really prolonged. So the machine software was getting messed up by the artifact. So we repeated it and it was 444. It was actually normal and boring. Okay, so tip number one of the evening is you need to have a good quality EKG before you can actually use any of the data on it. Okay, so let's go back to some foundations like not having artifact, right? That's super important. But also knowing what you're looking at. So the very number one thing on our list that we talked about on the roadmap is the 10,000 foot view, what are we looking at? Well, you can feel free to steal my speech for your patients, but tell me if you've ever had this happen before. You've had a patient and they've had, let's say chest pain and palpitations. And um, they come in and they're like, yeah, I want you to figure out what's wrong. So you order an echocardiogram, you order a stress test, and you order a Holtermonitor, let's say. The patient will oftentimes say, oh my gosh, that's three tests. Why are you doing three tests if I have one heart? Are you trying to soak up my pocketbook? And you're like, no, 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 listen, here's the thing. Your heart is like a house. So in your house, you have the plumbing, which is your vessels. You have the electricity, which is what we see on the Holter and the EKG, that's the conduction. We have our walls of our heart, right? Which is the muscle. And then we have our doors, which are the valves. And we need to look at the doors and the valves with the echo. We need to look at your electricity with the Holter. And we need to look at your plumbing with the stress test. And then they're like, okay, now that makes sense. But but you can't just see everything on that one echocardiogram? No, we can't, right? Um, if it's a stress echo, that's, that's maybe, but regular echo, no. So just know that there's four different components to the heart. And what we're talking about is just one component, the electricity, okay? Now, speaking of the electricity and going back to basics, let's just talk about the waves for a second. I know, Tori, thank you. I think it's a good reminder too. Let's go back to the waves because remember you have the very beginning wave and type this in the chat when you know the wave, what's this wave called? The very beginning wave. This is called the, this is called the P wave. Good job, you guys. What about this one here? What wave is this? This is a big one. This big, big wave here is known as the QRS complex. Yes, exactly. And the very tip of it is the R wave. Okay, that's the R wave. 
That's what we use. Good job, you guys, on Zoom and Facebook. The R wave is what we use to see if a rhythm is regular or irregular, right? We look at the R to R. Now there's a wave in between that down here, a little guy that's called a what wave? Yes, you guys are all getting this right. Strong work. That is a Q wave. Nice. Okay, so uh, Samantha and Joe hanging with Sam. That's funny. Um, everybody got that right. That's a Q wave. And then the downslope of this is called the what wave, you guys? What's this called? This is called the S wave. Good. Julia is a fast typist on Zoom. Fast typist. Okay. And then good job on Facebook too. We have the what wave here. This wave is the, <laughs> so many fast fingers. Good, this is the T wave, nice. And then this one is the U wave. This is one we hope we don't see. It usually means electrolyte abnormalities, okay? Now I wanna give you a little bit different take on this for a minute. I want you to think for pattern recognition that this is like a family. The P is the mom, the QRS is the dad, and the T wave is the baby. And they should all be holding hands together on the EKG, that's a normal thing. And we're not supposed to see a U wave, okay? Um, definitely not supposed to see that. So thank you, Tori put it all in. Thank you so much, Tori. All right, and so we also have, for our mom, our dad and our baby, we have some rules. And you may have not been taught this before, so if you haven't, that's okay, we're in teaching tonight. But our P wave should be nice and smooth. Our mom should be smooth. And we also have, the P wave shouldn't be too needy, meaning it shouldn't be too close to the QRS, okay? Shouldn't be too close. If it is, a lot of times it means there's a underlying Wolf Parkinson's white, and we will be talking about that in this challenge. I don't wanna give it away, but we'll be revisiting that. So just remember, hint, hint, the distance between the mom and the dad is very important. And it also just looks like our Carissa Hankins is here, our sleep um, coach, our sleep nurse practitioner slash pulmonary. Um, she's in the house. Thank you, Carissa, for hopping on. She's one of our coaches in the 30 day EKG challenge and she's hopping on just to say hi, you guys. So let's welcome Carissa. And also we've got our dad, our QRS, who's not too tall and not too wide, okay? So there's actually three roles. We don't want the QRS, the dad too small. We don't want him too tall and we don't want him too wide, okay? Not too small, not too tall, not too wide. If it's too wide, we think about heart, or sorry, bundle branch blocks. If it's too tall, we think about LVH, left ventricular hypertrophy. And if it's too small, we worry about things like pericardial effusion, okay? And then lastly, the T wave, we want it to be upright. And we also don't want our T wave to be pointy. If you can sit on a T wave and it hurts your butt, what process do we have to think about? Pointy T waves that hurt your booty. What do we have to think about? Tori is putting all the recap in there for me, Tori. Thank you. Yes. Okay. We do have to worry about AFib all the time. Um, but if a pointy T wave, we, we worry about hyperkalemia. So uh, Megan and K Dollar, nice job on Zoom for picking that up. Okay. So smooth T waves, right? And we also don't want them too big because if you have a very big child and your child's almost as tall as the QRS, that's also bad. Hey, Matt, thanks for chiming in. Matt and Kimberly are also, and Jessica also say hyper K. Good job. All right, now, let's just say you're somebody who likes to um, write things down. If you're one of those people, then in the workbook, I actually have this page for you if you wanna follow along right here, okay? So you can grab this out. And what I wanted you to do is I wanted you to label. So let's do it together real quick, okay? I wanted you to label the waves if you wanted practice. So what's this wave right here? This is called the... Type it in uh, Zoom for me. What wave is this here? This is the, yep, the P wave. This is the R wave. This is the T. And then what I really want you to type in for me, what I really want you to type in is what is this interval called? This is something that's very important. We just kind of touched on it a little bit. What's that interval called? Yes, good job, Joe, hang on with Sam. And Megan and um, Lynn, nice job. This is the R to R, okay? And that's what we use to look at the regularity. And then, um, and good job on Facebook, you guys too. Awesome, awesome. Um, this one is called the what interval. This is the beginning of the what to what. 
And this interval is really important when you're talking about medications like Zithromax, Zofran, Amiodarone. Good job, Brenda and Joe. Um, Ellie and Julia, yes, okay, good. This is, this is the QT interval, okay? And that's something that we don't wanna lengthen with our medications. And then this interval here is the PR interval. I drew, I drew this, actually, I think John drew, my husband drew this, but it's not actually to scale. But good job, you guys all got these right. So if you wanna follow along on your workbook, you can write those in if you want practice as we go, okay? Now let's just revisit conduction for a second because it's always really good to just go back to, hey, what's happening in the heart? And what does it look like on the rhythm strip? And you're gonna get tons of rhythm strip stuff on tomorrow night and Thursday night. So start getting excited about that. But just to recap, right, we have the AV node down to the, or sorry, the SA node down to the AV, down to the bundles, okay? And when things are working well, I think there's an airplane going over, sorry. When things are working well, the sinus node is in charge. Now, what wave does the sinus node make? What wave does the sinus node make on the EKG? It's a certain wave and we're always looking for it and we want to see it. Also, it's PS missing on this strip here. So yes, the P wave. So sinus makes P and we're missing a P here. Good, Judy. Yeah, so we're missing it. And um, also Mar Mar Martine and Chance, good job. The P wave's missing. So what would we call this rhythm? Okay, so what would we call this rhythm? We have no P wave. Look at the R to R, it's regular. It's also a touch slow. So if the sinus node runs the heart at 60 to 100, then, then this must be, oh, good job. It looks like Jessica and K Dollar and Megan all said junctional and you guys are right, okay? because it's still narrow, so it's coming in the top of the heart, it's still regular, and it's slow. So that's running at 40 to 60 beats per minute, and that's when the junction is in charge, okay? Now, let's just say that a massive MI, and <laughs> you can really put junk, I know what you mean, junctional. Let's say a massive MI took out the SA and the AV. Then who would take over next, and what would it look like? Well, the next guy in line, and it would look like this. And the key to this is yes, ventricles, nice. We know the ventricles are actually in charge here because the complex is wide. It's more than three small boxes and therefore it's wide and weird, yes. So wide is, is the key and this one is also slow. So this is coming from the bundles. Yeah, good job Martine, okay. So this is an idioventricular rhythm. So it's coming somewhere in the ventricles and that can be associated with no pulse, potentially a PEA situation, okay? So all of our medics that are on know this very well. And then lastly, Julie, Judy, good job. Lastly, if everything above it fails, then the next thing that's gonna happen is this. And this is basically running the heart at about zero to 20. This is a wide, bizarre um, complex here and here. And this does not have a pulse. And this is the last of the last chain. And this is somewhere in the ventricles trying to run the heart, most likely one or two little cells hanging in there. And this is gonna be considered an agonal rhythm. Okay, so that's what, what happens behind the scenes in the electricity. But now let's go switch gears from rhythms to a normal EKG. Now, this is an example of normal so that we can tell what abnormal is. And I wanna point out a couple of things to you that you may not be using that are helpful. Now, I know I was told when I was in medical school, I was told, um, yeah, Jen, um, those numbers up there, those are for the cardiologist. You don't need those numbers. And it turns out that everybody needs these numbers, okay? And these are known as the intervals. So we actually get these numbers on every EKG, but what we don't get is a normal reference range, the parentheses like that we get with lab values. So I actually put the normal reference ranges down here so you could work through this or write it down on your, your paper. So in your workbook, we actually have um, a little place for you to take notes on this if you want to. And I would also get out this too because we're gonna cover this next. So I want you guys to have this ready. This is our 10 step approach, okay? So a couple of things. First of all, we've got our mom, dad, baby, all holding hands, looking great. The sizes of the waves are all great. 
they're smooth, they're not pointy. We've got a normal R to R, so we can tell that we have a beautiful P wave. This is a sinus rhythm and the machine even knows that, right? And then we can scan through really quick and we can look at our baseline, which I drew the line here to see if there's any ST elevation or depression, because that's when we start delving into STEMI land, right? ST elevation, MI, is what STEMI stands for. We do not have any signs of this, thankfully, on this normal EKG, but the place that you're going to make that line when you're doing it is called the TP segment. And you guys, I'm super excited to share this with you because I did not learn this in school. Now, here's the thing. This is the, we talked about the waves. The one thing we didn't cover here is this TP segment. And this is always your most isoelectric or flattest line. So that's the one that's the the truest north, I like to call it. So this is what I take with my, you know, paper and pen or, you know, straight edge and pen. And I draw all the way across on every lead because I'm looking and scrutinizing if there's ST elevation or depression, okay? And yes, Tori just highlighted that. So you're gonna do that on every lead. People always ask me, Jen, do you literally do that in clinic? Um, yeah. I still do. Yes, I've been in cardiology for 14 years. Yes, I was a paramedic for, I don't know, 13 prior to that. But actually, I have, I have a tool. If I don't have this tool, although I have it on my badge, but if I don't have this tool with that little red line, this is called an RCAT window, and we will be giving some of these away, by the way. Um, if I don't have this, I do use paper and a straight edge. And, and literally, it doesn't have to be fancy. It just has to be accurate. But the other thing is, is the directionality of the T waves. So knowing that all your T waves should be upright, like these T waves, right? Like this one and this one, they shouldn't be inverted, okay? These two are inverted um, and this is normal. So you want AVR and V1 to be inverted. Everybody else has to be upright. So AVR and V1 down, everybody else up. And that's the rules for the T waves, right? So in a nutshell, this looks good. All the T waves are behaving nicely. They're all upright where they should be. QRS isn't too wide, and we can scan through these intervals and compare them to over here, and we can see that all the intervals are, are actually normal as well. Now, um, this is an example of normal, but let's look at an abnormal one for comparison, just to see if you can spot and keep an eye on, hint, hint, the T waves, okay? The T waves. So this is a, a really KG that uh, was from a patient who was having palpitations, imagine that. Lots of folks are having palpitations right now. It's actually one of my favorite chief complaints. I love it so much. Um, so if you look over here, oh my goodness, this T wave in AVR, right? And the one in V1, they're supposed to be upright. Or sorry, inverted, but they're upright, okay? And also there's other T waves that are a problem. Like for example, lead three and two and AVM, like, what T waves are behaving good? Like so many of them are inverted and symmetric. Actually, the only ones that are that are acting okay, um, AVL is upright, V2 is upright, but pretty much that's the only guy who's following the rules. Okay, so this has a lot of T wave abnormalities. This was a very, very sick heart and a global T wave inversion. Yes, absolutely. And it's symmetric. Now, one little thing I just wanna deep dive on for a second. I know we're getting short on time, but I want to tell you that the secret to the T wave is it should be a little bit asymmetric. Your T wave should be leaning over a little bit. And if it's not, if it's symmetric like these ones are, then it's probably something bad, something like ischemia or cardiomyopathy, okay? So if you see T waves that are symmetric and upside down where they shouldn't be, be very worried, okay? So now we know normal, now we know abnormal, and we're looking at all these bad T wave players they're not behaving. They need to go to their room without dinner for sure, right? They're teenage T waves for sure. But it's important to just kind of have a recap, right, on all the rules. So the family needs to be intact for sure. Um, and then, of course, all T waves need to follow the rules. Um, voltage, looking for too big, too small, looking at axis, and then making sure there's no activity and making sure there's a good quality. That's what we're looking for. Okay, and then finally, here's the 10 step system. So the 10 step system is what I was hoping you'd write down on here. Okay, what I want you to write down on here. So first things first, big sick versus little sick is step number one. Now, what does that mean? 
that means if you have an EKG and it's printed out STEMI, then that's a big SIG EKG. You're not gonna do your 10 step system. If it's VTAC, if it's asystole, if it's VFib, those are the four things that you're gonna be like, nope, big sick, I'm stopping here. And I'm gonna go ahead and get the patient to either the cath lab or 911 or wherever you're working, right? They need to go somewhere higher than where you are, unless you're in the cath lab and then you're gonna get that patient, right? But if they're not that, then you can go on with your system. So you can look at the number two rate, three rhythm, four scan the intervals and use those numbers to see if they match. Part of that is axis, right? And step six is doing that line, making that straight line across the ST segments to see if there's elevation and depression. The other thing you're looking at is how big or small are my R waves? That's hypertrophy or looking at how the voltage is, okay? And then I'm looking at my T waves and I'm scrutinizing them to make sure they're all following the rules. They're not sharp and pointy. They're not upside down where they shouldn't be. And then I'm gonna scan for Q waves and looking at how wide our QRS is, thinking about things like Wolf Parkinson's white and bundle branch blocks. But my favorite one is the last one. I put on my chief complaint based glasses here. Do you guys all have glasses like this? Do you have heart shaped glasses where you can actually go back into your EKG and do your chief complaint based approach? Well, what that is guys, is it's a great system so that <laughs> you, <laughs> you pick up the high risk things. So like, for example, if you have a pulmonary embolus patient, okay, or suspected, or if they're short of breath, that's the number one thing you should think about. Yes, you're thinking about COVID, but you're also thinking about PE, you're also thinking about MI, right? And so you're putting on your chief complaint based glasses so that you don't miss those. Yes, I know these glasses were so, they were in like a novelty shop, but we should all have them. Because again, if you have chest pain, you put them back on and you're like, okay, chest pain, I know I'm looking for STEMI. I'm looking for pericarditis. I'm looking for PE, right? I'm looking for all these things, but if I don't use, use my chief complaint approach, then I may miss them. And the big one is actually palpitations and syncope because you need to look for, in that case, specifically for things like delta waves and things like prolonged QT short PR. So that's really, really critical. Yes, love the glasses. Um, could wrong lead placement give false to inversion? It can cause your waves to be inverted. We see that a lot with um, V1 and V2 being placed too high, it can flip, flip the waves. Um, so yeah, we definitely wanna make sure we have good lead placement for sure. Okay, um, so if you use the 10 step system each and every time, then you will find that you keep yourself on a guided path so you don't miss the big things. The reason why I put big sick, little sick as the first step is because we don't want you to miss a STEMI. And I know, I know this for a fact because I've done a lot of private sessions one-on-one, -on -one, a, a lot of advanced providers actually who've been in, I had a gentleman who was a PA for 30 years and he was like, I just need more help on the EKG. I was like, okay. So we met and I said, here's our system. And he um, would look at the EKG and he would go straight to the first thing he saw, which would be the first thing that stuck out. And I kept telling him, stick with your system, stick with your system. But it's hard for us, right? Cause we're like, oh my gosh, that, that P wave or that T wave, oh, that's so cool, that's fight, right? And we miss the forest for the trees or the trees for the forest, however that saying goes. But we get stuck in the weeds and we don't get the big things. So if you keep these, it's like keeping blinders on <laughs> cause I get swirly eyed too with the EKG. I'm like, oh, all the things, right? I have to keep my blinders on like a horse. So I actually don't miss the STEMI. And he missed the STEMI multiple times because he caught, caught up in something that was beautiful and pretty somewhere else. So this keeps you safe. And when you do this, can you see the power in this, right? So the big six, Tosin, let me cover that again really quick. Um, there's several, but just a little nutshell. You have a systole, you have VFib, you have VTAC, you have STEMI, you have profound tachycardia, profound bradycardia, AFib with RVR, right? Those are just some that come off, off the top of my head that would not have you do your 10 step because they need to be addressed immediately. So if, if you're working in the clinic, you're calling 911 and that's a big sick. Like if you have to call 911 or if you are sweating because of the patient's EKG, you're like, that's usually a good, good test. Okay, but, but good question. And I, I think I went through that fast. So thank you for reminding me, Tosin. Okay, for our last exercise of the night, what we're gonna do is we're gonna practice with this EKG. 
Okay. So I want you to do a visualization with me for a minute. Okay. I want you to take yourself and picture where you work. So if you're working in the ER, you're standing in what, pick a room you're standing in, really go there. If you're in a clinic, like in my clinic right now, I'm in room three, I'm always in room three, okay? And this EKG is handed to you. You don't have to put it in the chat, but I, I want you to commit in your mind what you would do. And the options are, you would refer to cardiology or you would call 911 or you would repeat the EKG because it's saying there's a STEMI. <laughs> saying there's a STEMI. Okay, so we have some people who are saying um, activate cath lab. Okay, we have some guesses. So I'm glad that you're committing. I'm glad that you're committing. I want you to commit. And if you're if you're someone like me where you, um, Samantha says call 911. Yes, I like it. Yes, I, I really wish you would show up to, to my clinic if I called 911 Samantha, that would be amazing. But again, if you're someone like me, you like to look at the inferior leads first, um, then you probably did that. You were like, oh, I'm gonna go down and oh, I do see ST elevation here. I know that Jen told me that TP, right? I, Jen said that TP and I definitely see some elevation. So I, I'll even, I'll draw it for you, okay? And, and let's put a little bit of uh, emphasis here because you know that you have to have one small box of ST elevation, right? So you're looking at this and you're like, yeah, I definitely have two up. I know that's part of STEMI, right? Okay. Um, and a lot of you, you folks are uh, in the chat saying, yes, um, it's a STEMI and um, to the ED, these are all good answers. And uh, Jessica says, DDX differential pericarditis, which is a good call. So let me just show you how to really quickly go through this. Okay. So I did some of the leads for you, but what I would do is I would keep going. Okay. I would keep going. I would draw my line all the way across. If I, if I was in clinic, I'd use my RCAT window, right? And I go all the way across and I'd be looking, but I have a lot of widespread ST elevation, right? I have a ton of it. And so some folks are like, yeah, I just, just call the cath lab. And um, there is global ST elevation, yes. So I'm gonna tell you what would happen if you call the cath lab. The first thing they're gonna say, the first thing they're gonna say is, um, okay, you have your two up, where's your two down? Because you have to have two leads of elevation and two leads of depression, right? So we don't really have any down. We don't. I mean, that T wave's flipped, but it's not ST depression. There's exactly Evelyn, Irene. There's no reciprocal changes. In fact, the other thing that's a little strange, that's a little odd, is that I would I would reckon. I know Samantha will like when I say that. I would reckon that these little ST segments right here that are elevated, could you almost picture them smiling? because I know I can, they're like smiling because, <laughs> why are they smiling? Because they're at a pericarditis party and everybody smiles at the pericarditis party because they're so happy that they're not a STEMI because this ST elevation was consistent with pericarditis. It was not a STEMI. And when you draw your straight lines, you see that there is definitely more than two up, but there's not two down. So. This is what I was talking about when I said, guys, this, this software is there to, to mess things up for us. It's not accurate a lot of the times. And that's why we actually have to know this stuff. So yes, Samantha, you got it. And Jessica too. So everybody who thought pericarditis in their minds as well, um, for sure, like pericarditis party. I'm going to show, show you something that one of my mentors taught me that has never, ever left me. So if you are at a party, you are smiling, right? And if everybody is smiling, it's a pericarditis party. Everybody's up, up. Nobody's down, down. Nobody's frowning because it's a party and everybody's happy to be there. So that's the ticket of the CKG is the widespread ST elevation and no depression. So these little things, and Brenda says, I needed this. I know these little things really, really are key. So we covered a lot of ground tonight. We covered a normal EKG. We covered normal intervals. 
We covered basic conduction. We did all of this in an hour. So for hanging in there, pat yourselves on the back, right? And we, we actually also talked a little bit about um, EKG terminology. We also talked about a system that we could use every single time to keep us safe. And we have just begun because four nights more of this good stuff is coming, okay? And also um, as, yes, this is, nope, this is not a STEMI, this was a STEMI mimic. And also it's time for questions and tonight's giveaway. So Lisa, hi, I, you've been hanging with us for a long time. It's nice to see you. I do recognize you guys' names. I know there's 14,000 something in, people in this group, but I know all, almost all of your names that come back. I know you, got my eye on you. And I love that you keep rocking with us. That means a lot to me. Okay, so this is the, the so much fun. I'm gonna show you what the giveaway is. This is my hubby, John. And um, he's giving a hint of what the prize is tonight. So you guys, this is the prize. Oh my gosh, look at this. It was what John was holding. So we're gonna be giving one lucky person this kit. So at this is we love John. I know we so do. We're gonna be giving somebody this kit tonight. And what comes in this kit, okay, is some goodies. Oh my gosh, I love goodies. Um, so here's what's coming to you. Okay, remember this little tool that I was showing you? There's a bigger version of this. It's called the RCAT window. And actually, whoever wins this is gonna get this awesome RCAT window where you can use that little red line to make your TP segments. You can slide it right over. And it's got all these cool little things on the bottom where you can measure the intervals. It's got like a reminder of the STEMI stuff on the back. It's got the rule of 300 ruler. Oh my gosh, yes, you get this if you win this box. Okay, also, there's a bunch of practice EKGs that you can go through. Practice EKGs coming your way. There's a practice um, cheat sheet in here. I can't show you actually the cheat sheet because I would give, you, give it away. There's some crayons to color code the EKG. And, and that's not all. You also get a little mini painting. Yes, I hand make every single one of these. Yes, and uh, it comes on a little easel. And so whoever wins this box tonight is gonna win this painting. So isn't that so fun, you guys? Oh my gosh. So um, yeah, that's what we actually send to patients, um, or not patients. Can you tell I've been at work like a lot this week? We send people who join our challenge. We'll be talking about that later in the week but who join our challenge, everybody gets a box like this and a custom painting, but we're giving one away tonight. So if you want to win, if you want to win the kit, because I mean, I wouldn't want all the cheat sheets and stuff, they're gonna come in that. And that archive window tool is so bomb. If you want to win, I'm gonna give you a hashtag, okay? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hop off this Zoom, the Zoom is gonna close and I'm gonna go back only on Facebook and I'm gonna announce the winner. So you guys have to jump on Facebook for that part, okay? So I'm gonna announce it. And what you want to put for the hashtag. So if you want to win this, you put hashtag, hashtag EKG kit, hashtag EKG kit. That's the hashtag. And then we will um, pick our winner from that. So what I do is I come back on and I have a, your names in a bowl and I pick the name, the winner out right on live for you on Facebook. And then we'll tag you if you want. If you win this, send me your address in the private messenger and I put it in the mail and it comes out to you tomorrow. We give one of these away every time and it's so much fun because we love the winners sometimes post pictures and when they get their kit. And um, I was talking to somebody yesterday, she was like, she had been in our 30 days so she got one of these little paintings and she was like, yeah, you know, I feel scared at work, but then I just look at the painting and I remember all the things that you said and that it's gonna be okay. And I was like, oh, that's so cool. It's on her desk at work. So that was really cool. So anyway, we'll be hopping back on, but let me know also if you have any questions. It looks like we have tons of people in the Zoom that are wanting to win. We have tons of people on Facebook, um, so awesome. And I'm looking through really quick for any questions. Um, yes, exactly, Elizabeth. If you join our 30 day challenge later, you do get a kit. We don't sell them uh, privately though, just because um, they are expensive for me to make and it wouldn't be worth it for you to buy it. So um, it does come as part of our 30 day challenge. Okay, awesome, Joe, thanks for hopping on. You're gonna get to meet Joe 
in a couple of days for the bonus session. And I'll be back on to, to go ahead and draw our winner in just a few. And I'll see you guys soon. And then we'll be back tomorrow at the same time in the same way. And I've so enjoyed hanging out with you guys tonight. I'll be back on to the drawing in just a few. Okay.